Chemistry. I'm Jen Dionisio. And I'm Gigi Naglek. So while today most of us think of gelatin in its most popular form, jello, gelatin has been used since the ancient Greek times to bind, glaze, and preserve lots of foods, particularly meat. So gelatin is a mixture of peptides and proteins from collagen extracted from the bones, connective tissue, and even intestines of animals, particularly pigs and cows. The molecular bonds in collagen must be broken down to allow them to rearrange more easily into a liquid and then again a gel. So long before gelatin was sold in stores, pieces of meat and bones and all of that connective tissue had to be boiled for a really long time and the resulting broth, when cooled, naturally formed a gel, what we would today call gelatin. You know, Jen, the sheer quantity of animal parts that were necessary to create even a little bit of gelatin was excessive. Hardly the sort of process that would be easy to do in your kitchen. But then by the 19th century, gelatin was sold semi-processed in long sheets. So, Around this time, elaborate jelly molds, as they were called, became popular with the Victorian elite, who had plenty of servants to do all of the elaborate food preparation. Of course. So a big breakthrough came in 1845 when the industrialist and inventor, Peter Cooper, patented powdered gelatin. Now this was so much easier to use. The process was basically the same. The collagen was still extracted from all of these animal byproducts, but the resultant gel was then evaporated to create a powder, much easier to package. So hot water then brings powdered gelatin back to its liquid state. Right. Then when it cools, it forms a semi-solid colloid, and that is what gives Jell-O its signature Jiggle. There you go. You know, that reminds me, Jen, actually, we still need to tell you how we got from preserving meats in ancient Greek to America's most famous dessert. Right. So that powdered gelatin patent was sold to a man named Pearl B. Waite in the 1880s. Mm. So he took the gelatin powder, added sugar and flavors, and named it Jell-O. Ah. Unfortunately, it just wasn't very well received. So. Mm. He sold it to his neighbor, a man named Frank Woodward, for about $450 in 1899. Wow, well, Frank Woodward, as it turns out, was a marketing genius. In 1902, he took out ads in Ladies Home Journal calling Jell-O America's most famous dessert. Now, this was patently untrue. Most people had actually never heard of Jell-O by this time, but word started to spread. So a couple of years later, Woodward began sending out salesmen to distribute these free recipe books, like this one, and product samples. Um, of course, all of these recipes contain Jell-O, and so, not very surprisingly, by the mid-1910s, um, Jell-O was skyrocketing. So beginning in the 1930s, congealed salads and aspics started to come in vogue in American cuisine. A new jello flavor, lime, was introduced to complement these savory salads, along with the original lemon. Over the next several years, jello would actually introduce a number of savory flavors, including celery, seasoned tomato, Italian herb, and mixed vegetable. Oh, those sound like the perfect companion to some of the ingredients that ended up being part of these jello salads, like vegetables and fruits and meats and even fish. So once you combined all these ingredients, they were actually then put into fairly elaborate molds like this one here. So this actually came out of our cookbook and it includes lemon jello, cabbage, celery, green pepper, and macaroni. Delicious. Why not? Mm -hmm. I actually think if they still made Italian herb, that would have been a better jello choice. Not a bad idea, Jen. You know, even though those uh, savory flavors are off the market now, there are still lots of fruit flavors available in jello. And actually, jello is experiencing a revival of sorts these days. So hey, get jiggling. <laughs>